Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Amy, your independent Sensi consultant with Happily Scented Homes. And I'm back today with a little bit of a chatty video. Um, I wanted to talk about some of my wax goals for the rest of the year and also a new venture or journey that I'm gonna be starting um, this week that I do want to highlight on my channel as well in case people are interested or going through a similar journey. So, wax goals. <laughs> I have a shit ton of wax, guys. Like, I honestly don't have any business buying any wax. But the FOMO is for real. I'm telling you. Like, I un I don't know how all of you that have bought from multiple vendors, I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you are not taking part in every single pre-order or RTS or all of that. Because right now, all I deal with is Sensi. Walmart wax on occasion, melting memories, and lavender and speckles. That's all I've dove into. And I'm just like overwhelmed to the point where I'm like, what am I doing? So I couldn't imagine adding like Teddy Bees to that and Second and Spruce and Brita's and all these other vendors. I mean, I definitely do want to try a lot of these vendors, but I feel like I can't go into it all hog wild and like order a whole bunch. Like I feel like you definitely need to order quite a few times from a vendor and try a variety of their different blends in order to get an idea of who that vendor is, how they, you know, blend their wax, how they come up with the wax combinations, their passion behind their business, and then seeing how the wax is actually gonna work for you in your house before you move on to another vendor. So. That's why like I'm dipping my toes into the vendor like thing, but I have plans to to add more vendors to like my, you know, collection and stuff like that. Um, if you've been on my channel for a while, everyone knows I'm a Sensi consultant. I've been a Sensi consultant on and off since 2012. I've ordered from Sensi as a customer prior to 2012. So I've I've been pretty loyal to Sensi. I will always order Sunsy Wax, don't get me wrong. As enough, enough times that they've pissed me off and, you know, irritated the crap out of me, I'm still going to order for them. I'm still going to be a consultant because let's, let's be honest, the majority of us became consultants to just make money off our own purchases because we might as well get a discount for what we're buying, right? Right. If I can sell and make commission, awesome. Do I need? No, I don't. I work full time. I'm a college advisor. I don't, I don't need Sensi to be my bre bread and butter. I don't. But if it's going to help pay for my Sensi addiction or my wax addiction, great. Then I'll continue doing it. Um, but I'm always going to order Sensi. So Sensi is always going to be on my channel, but I am overwhelmed. Oh, these cats, I'm telling you today, these freaking cats. I don't know what they're doing. Anytime I don't film, they're quiet and you can't find and you can't find them in the house. The minute I turn my camera on and they hear me talking, it's like, oh, let's just have a Sims party and like, you know, annoy mom. But I am overwhelmed with all of the LTOs. There are so many LTOs. And I've said this before. I feel like I'm not giving the catalog sense a chance because, you know, there's an LTO that comes out. So we have to get the early access and then you're reviewing the early access and then you're doing a cold sniff and then you're doing a warm review. And then by that, by the time you get the early access and warm it, the collection's released and then you maybe have like a month from when the collection releases to when it retires to then decide if you're going to buy more. And then in between that time, two more LTOs might come out. You have a scent of the month. You might have a holiday collection. Like there is so much, so much. Just, just between now and December, like between now and January, right? We've got the holiday collection, okay? So actually, let's go back further. It's what, September 9th today? Yeah, September 9th. So we just had the fall catalog drop, which has 10 new scents plus some LTO scents that are now in the catalog from last year that I want to revisit because I don't know about you guys, I don't remember what the hell they smell like. Like I kind of have like a vague memory, but 
lately I've been finding that if I go to rewarm something that I warmed the previous year, I'm getting a different scent experience. So there are some of the scents in the catalog that I do want to revisit. So you've got the catalog scents, you've got the 10 new releases, you have the Harvest Collection that just dropped. We also have um, Jul July or June. We have June scent of the month still, July's, August's, and then this month, September, okay? We also have all the Disney stuff, like you've got the Beetlejuice and you've got, what else? I don't even know. There's so much. I can't even think about it right now. But then we just had NFL drop, right? Beetlejuice just dropped. Um, Villains is going to be coming up soon. So that's another LTO. Then you got the holiday collection. Then you got sense of the season. Then you got holiday bricks. Then you have all the holiday licensed Disney LTOs. Then in December, we're going to have a scent of the month. In November, we're going to have a scent of the month. Um, October is going to have a scent of the month. Um, there's that special, um, LTO collection with the gingerbread house that has three cents in it that you can only get if you buy the warmer or I'm hoping that they allow us to at least club it. So that's another one. And then in December, we're going to have the early access to all the bring back my bars that are coming for January. That's a lot of shit to deal with with Sensi. So my, my plans with Sensi is I'm still going to review everything. But I can't afford to keep paying $10 shipping to get like one bar to review it. You know what I mean? So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to do it once a month. Once a month, I will place an order, get whatever LTOs. Maybe I do it in a club so I can just do a one and done in club and get some of the licensed bars too to review. And that will be it. So on my channel, I'll still be reviewing new fragrances that Sensi's coming out with and giving you guys my honest reviews and things like that. But it's not going to be in a timely fashion. And sometimes maybe I don't review them before the collection releases. Maybe it's after the collection releases. But I have to do it in a timeline that makes sense to me and makes sense to my wallet. Because $10 shipping adds up. I actually went through um all of my Sensi purchases between January and now and I included all my bulk orders that I do um because I do offer bulk ordering for my local customers and I used to offer it twice a month I now only do it once a month and I covered the shipping on that because I figured hey you know if people, if I'm complaining about the $10 I know some of my customers are going to complain about it and if I can pass the savings to them great and I had commission to cover it so the the months that I had commission left over to cover the free shipping um then I would do it but now it's getting to the point where I'm only doing it once a month now but even that if I did that once a month that's still $120 a year I'm paying in shipping for products that I may or may not even like just because I want to review them because the FOMO is there. You know what I mean? So I think that's something I'm going to change. Um, obviously, my club is like out of control. And I really need to make some hard decisions. But my thing is a lot of the scents that I love by Sensi that I would repurchase, that I would buy off the black market at a higher price point because I love those suns so much and I can't get them. They're not up for voting. They're not being voted on. They're not up for voting or they're not eligible to be voted on because they're an LTO or they're a scent of the month or what have you. So I feel like my club right now, I can, I can justify what I have in my club right now. But once these scents start <laughs> coming out and I start getting them back, I'm really going to have to make some decisions. Like right now I've got like three lemon scents in my club. It's like, do I really need three? Do I really need two lime scents? Do I really need four strong hits you in the face florals? No. But because of that BMB five-year rule, 
it's forcing me to keep scents around because I'm worried that it will be five more years before I can get them again. And I feel like I shouldn't have to worry about that. Like I should just be able to order what's available in the catalog and in the LTOs and be happy with that and not have this ridiculous club that I'm just like holding on to for like dear life. And who knows, the hacks that I do and that I've shared, they might go away. I always say do it with discretion. Um, I just heard on Chris's channel, Dazzling Sense for Chris, that she tried the hack and something happened and she lost her club. I, I felt so bad. I'm like, please, please, please. If you're doing the hacks and you, if you have any questions or concerns, message me on Instagram, message me on Facebook. I'll walk you through it. Even if we FaceTime and you send, or even if you just send me screenshots of what you're looking at before you hit like, are you sure button? Because trust me, I've done that for people because they are so scared. And even when I do it, like you guys notice on my videos, I like gasp and hold my breath in because I'm like, oh no, is it is it going to work this time? Because you never know. You never know if they're going to fix that glitch or notice that we're all doing it. Because I think at this point, we're all doing the frequency hack to just keep pushing our date out every two months. Just keep pushing it out. Keep pushing it out. Um, I keep doing it. My clubs aren't coming out till November. And I was going to let them process in November, but I'm not getting through my wax as quick as I want to. So <clears throat> I think I'm going to be pushing my club out again. Once November comes, I'll push it out again. And then I made a decision that in February, I'll be letting those clubs finally come out. So that will be a year in between me getting my Scentsy Clubs. So I know I really don't have a lot of Scentsy Club like hauls and stuff like that, but I have, I just counted all my Scentsy Bars and I have 192 full bars. And then I maybe have like 10 that are partials because they're just like the new stuff that we just got in that I've already done like an initial warm review on and now I've got like half the clamshell left to to warm again so I probably have like 10 or so of those still that's a lot of sunsy bars that's a lot so basically to sum that all up my sensi content will change a lot I won't have a lot of hauls um but I'll have bigger warm review and first sniffs because I'm going to be combining all of those LTOs that came out during the month into one order. Um, so like I said, I might not have a first sniff warm review before the collection drops, but I will have one before the collection retires. So you can at least watch my video for reference stuff like that. I know a lot of you watch my videos ahead of time before something launches. So that way it gives you an idea of whether you should pass or, or skip or buy it. Um, but just for money purposes and just saving my wallet, I'm gonna have to do the bulk LTO ordering because it just makes more sense with everything that they have. Scent of the month, all the holiday stuff that's coming out, all the Disney stuff, which I haven't even reviewed any of the Disney like I didn't review the Lord of the Rings yet I haven't gotten the Beetlejuice bar um the new NFL bar like or any of the the Coco yeah the Coco bar that came in the Harvest collection I already warmed last year the Delightfully Frightful so I already have a review on that one but yeah so that's gonna be like my Scentsy stuff and what I will be doing is I will be continuing the catalog walkthrough series, going back through the past catalog um, from Sensi. I'm gonna go back and do those. Um, I actually got my hands on the 2006 catalog, so I'm gonna be super excited to share that with you guys. But I figured I'll go back with that. And then I'll just go back to, maybe I'll do, maybe I'll start doing a what I've been warming week, weekly thing. I don't know if you guys are interested would you rather me do the what I've been warming weekly or would you rather me just do my monthly empties at the end and talk about it then just, just let me know in the comments um so yeah so that's like my wax goals for Scentsy and I don't plan on ordering anything from Scentsy between now and February so unless it's a new release to try 
I will get it, but I have to make sure it's covered by commission. If, if I'm using my money to buy it, I'm not going to get it. I have to have commission to pay for it. So that's one stipulation. And the only things that I'll be buying from Scentsy between now and then, I mean, between now and February, <coughs> will be those new releases. I won't be purchasing anything else. Because I have, I, I shouldn't have done it. I mean, I'm glad I did it, but I got three bricks of the Jade and Jasmine on September 1st when, I mean, I was placing an order anyway. So it's not like, <coughs> it's not like I wasn't ordering, but I didn't need the three bricks, but whatever. I have them now. So that's, that's Sensi News. Vendor. So I have, um, <clears throat> I have two vendors right now that I order from Lavender and Speckles um, and Melting Memories, who is a Canadian wax vendor. So Lavender and Speckles, I did go in on the July pre-order. I just got my shipping notification that it should arrive Friday or Saturday. So I'll have that. That one I went hog wild on. I got like 25 of the blends that were on that list. I went super hardcore with it. I, I blocked out. I honestly blocked out. So I have that. So I didn't plan on ordering from Beth from Lavender and Speckles after that July pre-order. I was pretty much done until the new year. Well, I got an email notification because I signed up for customs. Um, I got pulled. I got pulled for October. So I'm like, crap. <laughs> but I do, <clears throat> I do want to do it because then she's also doing her Christmas pre-order in October. So it's like a win-win for me. So I will be placing one more order with Lavender and Speckles for the rest of the year and I'm going to hold off until February. So that way I have a chance to warm some of the older stuff that I got from Lavender um, Speckles last like February, March. Finish off that stuff. Try all the new fall blends, that type of thing. And then I think probably like in February, she'll probably be doing Gilmore Girls again, which is great because there's a couple that I do like from that. Um, but I'm definitely going to take a long pause on Lavender and Speckles um, until February after this October order, because like I said, it will be customs. And she did say that we could add scents from the Christmas pre-order to our custom list if we wanted some of those so we didn't have to place two orders. So I will be doing one last order from her in October. And then I will be on hiatus from Lavender and Speckles until February, possibly even longer, depending on how much I get through. Because right now, um, underneath this computer desk, because this, where is it? This right here, that's my Sensi over storage. So that's where I like keep all my warmers. And then there's three drawers. Like you can see right there, there's three drawers. The top drawer has all my testers and like flyers and brochures. This middle drawer is all bars that I don't like. There's about 40 in there that I de-stash. I de-stash to my local customers or I sell them, you know, get them out of my house. But I've got 40. And then this bottom drawer are all my pods. And like, so two years ago when we had that epic, epic, epic flash sale that had like 90 cent scent circles and like $2 pods and $2 cleaning products. I went ape shit crazy and I bought everything because I was like, oh, I'm going to be a Sensi consultant and I'm going to rock my business and I'm going to sell all this stuff. Yeah, no, that didn't happen. I overbought and I have about, I don't know, 10 or 12 bitty buddies that I got for a dollar 20 because I was going to be cute and make like these little boo buckets and Christmas buckets with them. I can't sell them for the life of me. I just give them away. When my daughter has her friends over, I'm just like, take a stuffy, just, just, just take one, get it out of that drawer. <clears throat> so that's all full of Sensi. But like I said, the top thing, where is it right here? Um, that's all warmers. That's all seasonal warmers. And then brochures, consultant stuff, bars, and then excess Sensi products. But then over here, is my five shelf bookcase. That's where I keep all my Scentsy wax, the bricks, the empties, that type of thing. Under my desk, I have one of those three drawer plastic things from Walmart. 
And right now, this is what I have all my vendor wax in. So I do not want to use more than one drawer for a vendor. So I feel like once I get the July pre-order from Lavender and Speckles, and then I get the October order for my customs, I feel like I'm going to fill two drawers. So I don't need to order Lavender and Speckles until I at least clear out one drawer, if not clear out a drawer and a half so that I have room to actually order and put Lavender and Speckles in. So that's going to be my journey for Lavender and Speckles. I know a lot of you come to my channel for Scentsy stuff, but I am starting to do vendor wax too. So that's my plans anyway with Lavender and Speckles. So what you can expect is me to unhaul the July pre-order and then later on in the year, you'll see me um, unhaul my customs order that I'll be placing in October and getting in sometime in December. So that's my journey for lavender and speckles the other wax vendor that i um order from is melting memories um she's a canadian wax vendor veronica her wax blends are just amazing i have yet to purchase anything from her that i have not liked um like her stuff is just awesome but i did do her fall pre-order she had a pre-order last month was it last month or was it in july no it was last month yeah, it was last month. Um, <laughs> the summer and the fall are just melting together at this point. But I did do her fall pre-order and I went ape shit on that one too. I said I was going to keep it small. I honestly could not narrow down my list because all of her blends just sounded amazing. They were all different. Like they all had different scent combinations and different things going on with them. And I got like a variety of different things. I got like bakery and then like spicy and then like woods and sophisticated. So I got a good like mix of those scents. <clears throat> so I have that coming. And um, I think she said she'll be shipping them out within like the next week or so. So probably within like two weeks, I'll have that to unhaul. And then she is going to be doing a ready to ship at the end of the month. So depending on if I like any of those scents from the fall, I might go in on her ready to ship um, and get some additional duplicates of some of the fall scents that I ended up enjoying from her. Um, but yeah, and then I know she's going to be doing a Christmas one. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to go in on the Christmas one. I might. I'm not sure. But if I do, if I do end up going in on hers, I think that would be it. And then I'm done. So I think what I want to say to sum all this up is that after October, I am on a no buy for wax. I know it's sad. It's so, so sad. But I skipped out on Teddy B's. Trust me, I was tempted this weekend like 20 different times to just go in and order sugar, chestnuts, and apple butter. Like, I was going to do it. I had it in my cart. And I'm like, nope, not going to do it. Not going to do it because you don't need it, Amy. You have 8,000 other things coming in. You've got all this wax here. You don't need to do it. Try Teddy B's next year. Just, just do it. So, yeah. So pretty much after October, once this final Lavender and Speckles is done and the final um, pre-order for Melting Memories, whenever she does her Christmas one, I'm not sure if it's going to be in October or if it's going to be later. Um, but as of Halloween, <laughs> as of November 1st, I am on a no buy until February. So that will, that will give me the rest of this month, October, November, December, January, and February. Because if I place orders in February, it won't be until the end of the month anyway before I get them. So that will give me six months to work on my wax. And in that time frame, I want to cut my lavender and speckles collection in half. Like I want to, I want to get it down to one drawer. Okay. Uh, Melty Memories, her stuff is pretty small. I shouldn't say it's small, but like the packaging is pretty neat that I could stack. Oh, I love the 
next one. Um, I could stack like a crap ton in here. So I'm not really worried about like filling that up. But yeah, so I do want to work on my lavender and speckles and at least get it down to one drawer. Melting Memories, I'll just warm that as I'm going through it and trying it. But Scentsy, I want to get my collection down to 75 bars in six months. 75 is my goal. So I think what I'll do is every month I'll just check in, share with you guys my total and let you guys know how well I did. And then we can go from there. And then we can also discuss like hiccups. If I had any struggles, did I get FOMO and purchase anything? Cause you know, between now and February, there's going to be a Sensi flash sale. There's probably going to be Sensi clearance updates. I'm still waiting for them to put the freaking Jack, Jack's obsession bar in clearance. Like the brick. I know they have them in their warehouse. They're hoarding them and I don't know why because that collection never sold out. The warmer brick bundle that they had going on last year, that never sold out. When it retired and went back into the vault, it never had a sold out sticker on it. So you know they have excess Jack's Obsession bricks. They need to put them in the freaking clearance section so I can just buy it and be done. Because I honestly think if I was able to purchase two Jack's Obsession bricks, I would be fine and I would take it out of my club because I only warm Jack's Obsession during the fall. And it's really only like September and October do I warm it. So a, a brick would last me several years. Like, just let me buy the bricks. Can I just go to Idaho and buy the bricks and then, you know, we'll be fine will be fine so yeah so that's my wax journey so far wax holes that I'm gonna do for the next six months so come join me come come with me on my journey let's see how much wax I can get through um the other thing that I wanted to talk about I didn't want to make this video too long but I'll try to keep the this next announcement under 10 minutes um as other YouTubers on here in the wax community, I am going to be going on a weight loss journey yet again. Um, I've done it before. Um, I started posting about it on my community tab, but I really didn't want to do a video because I didn't want to be vulnerable. But I feel like a lot of us are now like on this same pathway and I feel like we can bring support to each other and maybe I can finally get this thing to stick. So... I'm going to get a little vulnerable, so. I, I'm not a crier, though, so don't worry about that. <laughs> so, I've struggled with my weight my entire life. But I've never been one that I've been affected by it with, like, self-esteem and confident issues, if that makes sense. I was fortunate enough that I did not get picked on being the chubby kid and I think it's because I have such a bubbly personality and I'm social and I'm loud and I'm funny that I was just everybody's friend like I was that person that was friends with all the friend groups like I was friends with the preppy popular kids I was friends with the jocks I was friends with the emo kids I was friends with the nerds I was friends with like the um urban crowd hip-hop like you know it I was friends with everybody didn't matter didn't matter you could have been the lunch lady and I was friends with you. Um, but I've struggled with it my entire life. Like being a 90s kid, I think like diet culture was just like ingrained in our head. I remember going on like Richard Simmons' meal -a deal and doing uh, Jenny Craig and Weight Watchers. And I remember like having months where it was just like tuna fish and carrot sticks and celery sticks and rice cakes and then those snack well like diet cookies and cakes and stuff like I was that 90s diet kid that drank the diet soda and all that and it really fucked me up as a kid like my relationship to food it's really bad um I struggle with weight and food 
on so many different levels. So I do have medical things that are wrong with me. I suffer from PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. I was diagnosed with it when I was 17. Unfortunately, the number one symptom of PCOS is infertility, and I don't have that. I have three children. Um, literally got pregnant instantly. Like the minute we decided we wanted one and started trying, it was like, oh, there, there you go. A seed's been planted enjoy the next 10 months of your life. So like, I don't have that problem. I've never had any regular period, which is the second symptom of having PCOS. Um, it's been clockwork every 21 days since age nine. Like it's never changed. But the other symptoms, which is a weight gain specifically in your ad abdomen area and, um, excess body hair and um the cyst on the ovaries obviously so that in itself plays a huge role in how I hold weight and how difficult it is for me to lose weight in combination of having PCOS I also have hypothyroidism that wasn't diagnosed until at least 10 years after my PCOS diagnosis because they originally thought I was diabetic they thought I was pre-diabetic they put me on like metaphorin pills which I instantly threw up could not handle it they found out it wasn't that I was diabetic or even borderline diabetic it was that I was insulin resistant with the PCOS and then the hypothyroidism came in later um when I went off birth control because I was put on birth control to control my cystic acne so then when I got off of that all they did like a blood panel and stuff like that and that's when they found my thyroid was like pretty much off. And then they found out that I had hypo. So I'm on that synthetic hormone because mine's pretty much dead. And your thyroid controls everything. Metabolism, mood, sleep, your weight, hormones, like everything. So that in combination with my PCOS and being insulin resistant fucks me up in trying to lose weight like I could run five miles and lose a half a pound where someone normal could run five pounds and lose 10 so I struggle trying to not get disappointed and not feel defeat because my body's working against me um in combination with all of that before I was even diagnosed with PCOS or the thyroid problem or any of that stuff I suffered from eating disorders because I was a 90s diet kid. Um, I remember in eighth grade that that's seventh, seventh grade was the height of it. And I was anorexic. So I literally starved myself and I got down to the point where I was so thin. Like if I can find a picture, I'll put it up here. And that was like the, the height of my anorexia. Um, I never ate. I think I maybe ate an apple a day and I drank water all day long water and tea like like red rose like herbal tea but I only had an apple a day because I figured that was enough to keep me healthy yeah that makes sense but I remember that I liked the feeling of being hungry like those hunger pains I strive for them and I remember to this day all throughout middle school, I literally would just sit there and suck my stomach in, hoping that it would make it flat. And I would sit there for eight hours, just sucking my stomach in, perfect posture, just so it I didn't have like a roll over my jeans. Okay. So luckily I got over that. I definitely got over that after we moved to Maine and I was just like in a different mindset and I was able to get help for it, but I still have a horrible relationship with body image. And I do suffer from body dysmorphia too, because I'll look in the mirror and I don't see what you guys are looking at. I might see Amy that's like 50 pounds lighter. And then every now and again, I'll get the real glimpse of myself. And then that drives me into a depression. And then I binge eat or do something like that. So it's a never ending cycle. It really, really is. But circa 2018, before COVID and all that happened, um, I found keto. And for some reason, keto clicked and it worked. 
all of the symptoms I had from PCOS, all the symptoms I had from the bad thyroid, they all seemed to either diminish or completely go away when I started to incorporate a ketogenic lifestyle. And I wasn't the keto person that just ate like butter and meat all day. I incorporated my vegetables, my leafy green vegetables, and I incorporated my fruit, like my berries and my melons and stuff like that into my macros because I was not going to deprive myself. If I wanted to have a piece of fruit, I was going to have a piece of fruit and I was going to make it work for me. So I did that for like nine months and I lost like 60 pounds. Could not believe it. It was, I went from like a 2X shirt down to a large. I could not believe it. Like I was, I think I was like 14 pounds shy of being under 200 for the first time since eighth grade. So I can't remember what happened. I think I just kind of like went off of it thinking that I could maintain it. And then I think I gained some of it back, but not all of it. And then in 2019, I got pregnant with my last son. And then I never got back on the bandwagon. So fortunately, I'm not the same weight I was when I had him. So I have lost and maintained like 10 pounds for the past four years. But I had three C-sections, so I have the kangaroo jack like flap thing going on and that is what I'm like the most self-conscious about is having that c-section apron because it just makes you look like you have an ass in the front and I don't like I didn't do that <laughs> my muscles did that after the c-section I mean I still don't even have feeling even like my first c-section was 12 years ago and I still don't have feeling on the left hand side and I'll tell you this story really quick because it's funny. So yeah, you lose all your feeling there because they're cutting through muscle and nerves and stuff like that, right? Well, it was during the winter, like several years ago, like three, maybe four years ago. And I was at Walmart and I went shopping, came out trying to find my keys. C can't find my keys on me. And I'm always that type of person that until I got those crossover bags, I'd always lose my shit everywhere. I'd forget where I put my wallet. I leave my phone like in the aisle on the shelf. Like I was that type of person that could literally lose her head if it wasn't attached to her body. So I'm looking and I'm looking and can't find my keys. And then I retrace my steps. I walk through the parking lot, back into the store. I follow the whole path I did in the store. I checked the shelves that I knew I stopped and like, you know, window shopped, couldn't find my keys anywhere. I started to panic. I'm like, what am I gonna do? I can't get home. The person who has my spare is like hours away. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? I have no idea. Eventually I find them. They were in my front pocket here, but because I have no feeling there, I didn't feel the keys. I literally could not feel like my, yeah, my hands rubbing like, no, no, no. So I felt like a dumbass because I had them in my front pocket the whole time, but I couldn't feel them. So didn't know that there was even keys there. So that's my life. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I felt my best when I did that type of lifestyle and I lost a lot of weight. So I want to get back to that point. And I've tried doing it four times this year and I have not gotten past week two. So I feel like maybe if I do this and maybe if I share it on the channel, you guys can help me get there. So this is what I'm gonna do. So there's still gonna be predominantly wax on my channel. You'll see me still do that. But every like week, I'll do like a weight loss update. Maybe it'll be weight loss Wednesdays and I'll just share like struggles that I'm going through. Maybe it's like a meal prep video. Maybe it's just like an update video on my weight, that type of thing. Um, so that will be on the channel. So if you don't like those videos and don't want to watch, certainly skip them when they are uploaded. Um, but like I said, I will still have the wax content. I just want to add this other thing about my life to the channel to relate to you guys and I don't know just have accountability I guess um so as of today I'm 274 
it's just disgusting. <laughs> it's just disgusting to say it out loud. Like you are less than 25 pounds away from being 300. Like I'm Tammy from a thousand pound sisters. Like I, I can't be that person. I cannot be the one that Dr. Now says, you could have lose 30 pounds this month <laughs> or whatever he says. But so I hope you guys enjoyed this video, a little bit of my OAC goals and life goals for the next six months. So um, maybe I'll just do a check-in, like I said, with the wax goals. And then maybe it'll be wax and weight loss Wednesdays. And then just give you guys an update on the wax and the weight loss. I don't know. I'll figure it out. But hope you enjoyed this. If you want to ch chat, if you've got any similar issues, just throw a comment. Keep the conversation going. Thanks for liking, commenting, subscribing, guys. Bye.